Hello everybody, welcome back, welcome back to Sin City Living. Jason here, bringing you today's video. So uh, I know I haven't posted a whole lot of videos lately, it's the whole two jobs thing, then I got uh, really sick for about a week and a half. Um, but I'm back and uh, bringing a couple videos for you guys. Now we have gotten zero emails from anybody as far as anything they would like to see, be it strategy or just any questions they might have had. So, um, so I'm going to kind of reiterate a few things that we've talked about in the past. So today, I want to talk about uh, uh, why, why so many people play craps and don't win. Why, why winning is so rare. Um, some of this would actually hold true to all the casino games, um, but we're talking about craps. and This has been one of our most popular subjects, so I figured I'd go ahead and reiterate it one more time for any newcomers to the channel. So the, uh, the very first rule that I, or not rule, but the first thing I would say as far as why people don't win, they don't understand the game. They don't understand the game and they not only it's not just understanding the bets as far as how the bets work and what they pay but I don't even want to say understand the math although the math is of course important but just understanding the flow of the game and and um, percentages odds things along those lines so one of the things I see oftentimes is I see people that know very very tiny percentage of the game and when we dig a little bit deeper they don't really understand it they don't understand it at all. For instance, every so often I'll see, and this is a little bit rarer because this bet's kind of gone away um, as far as popularity goes, uh, and honestly, rightfully so, but the combat. I'll see people bet a combat, and then we'll travel and we'll ask them, hey, do you want any odds? And they give us this blank look because someone else told them about odds, or, or I'm sorry, combats. So someone else showed them combats, or even worse, they read a 50-year-old book about craps and it told them to bet combats, but they don't actually understand what the hell they're betting. They don't understand what the hell they're betting. They don't understand what odds would even apply for here, why they should do it. This person's not going to win. This person's never going to win. This person could catch a three-hour roll, and they're only going to win a couple of hundred dollars. Um, then you've got your players that uh, do play sets. And, you know, we're 10 minutes into a, a pretty strong roll. We've, we've paid them, you know, 10, 12 times. I mean, maybe, maybe not that much. We've paid them, say, you know, five or six times. And they're still in the same bet. They're still in the same bet. In, in this case, now, they, they do understand the bet itself. But again, they don't understand the game. This is somebody that learned these bets, learned how to play the game, learned place bets. So they're still probably relatively new to the game. Um, you know, they've probably played it one, two dozen times, maybe a little bit less. So, you know, they're, they're pleased because they're getting paid, they're getting paid, they're getting paid as, as the role progresses. Now, you know, this player will catch a nice, you know, if this player caught that, that uh, you know, hour-long roll, they're probably going to win four, five, six hundred dollars, absolutely. But whether or not that is their win condition, who knows? Because yeah, that, that kind of, that, that, that almost leads me to, to, my, uh, um, to my next point, which is so few people do their own research. And again, you see a lot of combats, and when you ask people about them, either somebody taught it to them, and typically when, when I see, combats is kind of an old school bet. It does not make it a bad bet in any way, shape, or form. It is not a bad bet. Um, but it's, it's definitely an old school bet. And I had somebody mention, you know, when they read a book about craps, you know, 30, 40 years ago, they, they told them to play, play combats. And I would say 85 to 90 percent of combat players that I see are over the age of 60. And then the rest of them, when I see them, the younger ones, when I ask them where they learned to play combats, they were taught the game by a boss, a father-in-law, a father, something along those lines. Somebody that, again, plays very, very old school. Basically, they didn't do their own research. Same thing when I see, <laughs> when I see this. When I see the Iron Cross. When I see the Iron Cross, even when I see a classic Iron Cross, a proper Iron Cross, not an improper one. But when I see an Iron Cross, this person honestly did, did partial research. They watched some YouTube videos, and it's ironic me saying that since you know, here we are on YouTube, but they watched some YouTube videos, but, and they were shown this, this betting style, and, and it shows them, look, you're going to win every single time the dice roll, and they don't actually understand it. They don't understand it. And that's why I always see this look of bafflement on people's faces as they play for an hour or two and their, their stacks just dwindle. They make less and less, they have less and less money in front of them. Because they're bewildered because, but, but, but I, I, I win every time the dice hit. That's that, yes, you do. But 
they don't still, again, did not do their own research and don't understand, again, why they're losing. They don't understand what it takes just for this bet to break even. And they don't understand what it takes for this bet right here, this betting strategy to break even and what kind of role it takes. It takes an exceptional role to break even. Okay, now the biggest thing, second biggest thing I should say, on why people don't win, they don't have a win condition. They don't set a win condition. I see this all the time. People will catch a 25, 30 minute roll. Then after the roll ends, you see one, maybe two people color up out of say 10, 12 people on the table. They'll color up, they'll leave. And those are the people that actually knew how to win. And everyone else, they look at their stacks and they keep playing. And they keep playing. Why? Because they did not hit their win condition. They did not hit that amount of money in their rail to look at and go, damn, I'm way up. I'm happy. I'm out of here. I'm out of here before I give this back. Okay. That, I call that the win condition. Now, everybody's going to have it a little bit differently. I usually like to look at it as a percentage of your or multiplier of your buy-in. So if you buy in for a hundred bucks, your win condition should be between three to 500 bucks. If you hit that win condition, walk the heck away. If, uh, you know, if you buy it for 500 bucks, your win condition should probably be 1500 to 2,500 bucks. Um, you know, and if you hit that win condition, then walk away, leave. What I usually say is if somebody catches a 20 to 30 minute roll and they did not win enough to walk away from the table, they will never, ever, ever win because they don't know how to play. Now, understanding your win condition, that's part of it. The second part of it, biggest reason, the biggest reason why so many people don't win at craps, they don't play to win. You're not playing to win. You cannot hit your win condition if you're just going to same bet, same bet, same bet, same bet, same bet. I hate to say it, but it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen um, unless you are absolutely going for it. For instance, let's say you bought in for, I don't know, 500 bucks, right? You bought in for 500 bucks. And you're playing like this. $100 flat bet, $200 odds, $90, six and eight. So basically you've got most of it on the table. Here, yes, you can hit your win condition. You know, bought it for 500 bucks, your win condition is say $1,500. You have $1,500 in your row. Right? If you catch a 15 to 20 minute roll, betting like this, yes, you absolutely can hit your, hit your win condition, 100%. Just, just saying, same bet, same bet, same bet, taking your wins on your pass line and your odds, repeating that bet, not even pressing it up. You absolutely can hit your win condition on that bet. Extraordinarily rare but it can't happen. But what you'll notice is you have your, almost your entire $500 bankroll on the table right now. <coughs> so basically you have one, one shooter, <clears throat> right, one shooter in order to hit your, your win condition. Now, you see all these people that, that get snowballed by all these, these strategies you see on the internet that heads this, heads that, playing with house money after X number of rolls and you know, you can't lose, all that. It's all a bunch of BS guys, it's all a bunch of BS. Now, with every strat, every strategy, every strategy, even the best ones, the ones that can, can potentially win the most money, um, they all have weaknesses. They all have big weaknesses. They all have holes, and you know the dice will take will take advantage of those holes, right? What you need to do is you need to look at your bets, and you need to figure out approximately what kind of role it's going to take to hit your win condition. And generally, what I will tell people is you want to look at if your win condition is less than two grand. Say your win condition is, you know, if I make 1,500 bucks, I walk away. If I make 500 bucks, I walk away. If I make 500 bucks, I'm gonna walk away. 500 a profit. Um, what you wanna look at is you wanna look at what it's going to take to make your win condition in one roll, in one roll. Because you're, you're generally down once the, the, uh, the rolls start right? and, and uh, once the hot roll starts. So you wanna look at what it's going to take in order to hit your win condition. So let's say you're on $15 minutes on that table. And you've got, say, that $500 condition, right? So, look at something like 81 across. Now, maybe you start with 51, 51 inside, and then you expand out to 81 across. That's fine. You, you can do that as well. Look at how many times it's going to take for a number to hit in order to hit your win condition. So, if you same bet every single time, make $21 every single time, right? Okay, that means you need, what, 30 hits to hit your win condition? 25 hits, 25 hits to win, uh, of the same number to hit your win condition, or any of these numbers to hit your win condition. All right, 25 hits. So you're looking at uh, probably a 45 minute to an hour roll. And that's assuming that you're not already down. If you're already down a few, few, uh, few hundred bucks, then you can you know, add another 10 to 15 hits in order to, to get paid. So now you're looking at just a, a monster roll, a once a month kind of roll. 
Or how many times does it have to hit in order for you to make your wind condition the same number if you're doing, say, a mid press? If you're doing, say, a mid press, okay? So one hit, two hits. that up. Three hits. That's four hits. Five hits. Now after five hits, the same number, we have the wind condition. We are not. So, next. So this is six hits. We're doing a mid press scenario here. So that's six hits. Now we're at seven hits. And then we hit eight hits. Okay, got a win condition. Eight hits of the same number on a mid press scenario will get us to our $500. To our five hundred dollars now, not in one payout. It actually takes the ninth hit in order to do that. So the ninth hit generally. So you need a number to hit nine times if you're doing the mid press method. If you're not doing the mid press method, how many times do you need to hit? You got to figure that out. Same thing with the power press. Not only figure out your wind condition, but figure out what kind of roll it's going to take to hit that. Most people never do that. They don't realize that the way they're playing is going to take that once a month, once every other month, hour and a half roll to hit a wind condition. So hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at least just plain fun. We'll catch you guys all next time. Bye now.